Now, while the young African leaders meet with the U.S. officials, the annual Africa Growth and Opportunity Act, or GOA Forum, is also taking place here in Washington. The event brings together more than 600 participants, including senior U.S. and African government officials, as well as members of the private sector and civil society. Here's, v here's a report by VOA's Paul Ndiho. Washington grants a duty-free status to more than 6,000 product lines from Sub-Saharan Africa under the U.S. Africa Growth and Opportunity Act of 2000, or AGOA. This year, the AGOA Forum is focusing on the ties between private investment and growth and ways in which African countries can take advantage of trade. U.S. Trade Representative Ron Kirk says that Africa's exports to the United States have more than doubled. AGOA has um, certainly met our expectations in terms of transforming our relationship uh, with Africa from one that had been traditionally just based on aid to one uh, that would begin to build up and then build on commercial and economic ties uh, to the mutual benefit of the 38 um, sub-Saharan countries. AGOA provides trade preferences to countries that are making economic and political reforms. AGOA reduces uh, barriers to trade, creating jobs. But U.S. exports to sub-Saharan Africa go primarily to a few countries. And Kenya's Minister of Trade, Amos Kimonya, says a lot more needs to be done to realize AGOA's full potential. We have 6,400 uh, products eligible for, for export into the U.S. under AGOA. But sadly, only a very limited number is coming through. And, um, you know, various countries have different issues in terms of where they are not exporting. The bulk of the trade is 90% plus. It's oil and uh, energy-based uh, products. Whereas the 10, you know, uh, the 10% constitutes, you know, a very tiny uh, percentage of the U.S. imports. Uh, on a global basis. So we, we feel that, you know, 10 years on, the number should have increased. In early years, some countries were able to increase substantially textile exports to the U.S. under AGOA. However, African manufacturers have found it increasingly difficult to compete against Indian and Chinese textiles. African women entrepreneurs are being showcased at this year's AGOA Forum in Washington. Susan Mwezi is special advisor to the president of Uganda. We trained about 200 women in the apparel sector, and they, uh, this, they were just entirely women. And we have had women in the craft section. We have created jobs for the youth, especially women. They are 38 sub-Saharan African countries taking advantage of AGOA's trade benefits. Oil accounts for most of what the U.S. buys from Africa. But the Zambian Trade Minister Felix Mutati notes that AGOA has resulted in some significant strides in the agricultural sector. We have had significant challenges in the agricultural sector in terms of entry. Access has been okay, but in terms of entry associated with standards, associated with pest control, and we are working with the US TDR to ensure that you know, the challenges that we face in terms of pest control standards, quality, how best can they create capacity for us? Analysts said that the U.S. trade with sub-Saharan Africa decreased 40% in 2009 because of the economic downturn. The U.S. Africa Growth and Opportunity Act is due to expire in 2015, and some African countries would like that deadline extended. Paul Ndiho, VOA News. Now, for more information on any of today's stories, please visit us online at voaafrica.com. And you can also visit us on Facebook. Just search for In Focus.